Council of Mayors Executive Committee for July 20th, 2021. And the uh, first order of business is to cost order and then do introductions. So I think what we want to do is, because we do have several new members on the council here after the most recent elections and a couple of people didn't run for re-election. So we've got a little bit of a change here going on. So I guess I would like to start by asking all the mayors in the region to, uh, that are listening in, participating, if you'd introduce yourselves and specifically also share with us which of the councils you are there to represent. So that, that would be kind of the first order of business. I guess I'll start with myself. I'm uh, Jeff Schelke. I'm the mayor of Batavia. Uh, I've been in office for over 40 years. So I'm uh, one of the old veterans in the region. Uh, there are a couple other mayors that also share that honor with me of having been in office for now 11 terms. So uh, been here a long time, been with this group a long time. I go back to when it used to be the Chicago Metro or uh, Chicago Area Transportation Study. And then we whole thing was redone many years ago and there was a combination of NIPSI and, and uh, North, Northern Illinois Planning Commission, Northeastern Illinois Planning Commission and Chicago Area Transportation Study were merged together. And we now have this really truly professional outstanding staff and organization that represents the counties surrounding the city plus the city of Chicago. So we are very honored to see the, pro I've been honored to see the progress that this group has made over the years. So. Uh, uh, I guess I don't have a list here of who all the, oh, wait a minute. Mayor Shulke, why don't we do this at the same time we do attendance? So we can call attendance and ask for the mayor to introduce themselves. Yeah, okay, let's do that way. That's good. Thank you. Mayor Shulke, I've got a list going so I can read off the names. All right, go ahead. And then when you read the name, I'd ask whoever the responder is that they tell us a little bit about themselves. Okay. Um, so the members who I see on the call right now, the first is President Lungmiss from Northfield. Yes. Hi, Mary. Hey, everybody. So I'm the new, I guess I'm the new guy on the block. Um, uh, elected back in uh, April, uh, took, uh, was seated in May. Um, lived in Northfield all my life. Um, I'm uh, representing the North Shore Council of Members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Next, uh, next, I see President Dark. Um, good morning, everybody. Karen Darge uh, from the village of Barrington. Um, I am uh, in my fifth term, I guess, and I represent the Northwest Council. Good morning. Good morning. Then I see President Hayes. Good morning, everyone. Tom Hayes, uh, village president of Arlington Heights in my third term and also representing the Northwest Council. Yep, uh, next, I see President Gallagher. Yes, good morning, everyone. I'm Alice Gallagher from Western Springs. I just started my second term there and final term uh, in Western Springs, and I represent Central Council. Thank you. Then I see President Einhorn. Uh, I'm Mike Einhorn, Village of Creek, South Council. I've been around for a while. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next, I have President Kolosh. Matt, I think you're on mute, President Kolosh. We can come back to President Kolosh. Looks like there might be some mic issues there. Um, then I have Mayor Grasso. Hello, um, Gary Grasso. I'm two-term mayor in Village of Burr Ridge from 05 uh, into 13 when I was elected to the DuPage County Board for two, two terms. Uh, now I'm the recycled mayor again at the village of Burr Ridge uh, uh, and uh, starting my fourth term. Uh, and I also happen to know uh, Jeff Schulke, but uh, Mayor Schulke, but but don't hold that against me, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, then I have President Ryback. Yes, welcome. Uh, greetings from Wadsworth. I am in my fourth term and I'm representing the Lake Council along with Mayor Rockingham of North Chicago. 
Great. Um, then we have Mayor Barrent. Good morning. Um, Emily Barrent. I am the president of the village of Bull Valley in my second term, and I am here for McHenry County. Thank you. And then I have Mayor Kurtz. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm mayor for the village of Diamond. I'm in my fourth term, and I'm also a transportation chair for the Will County Governmental League. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Um, those are the committee members who I saw in attendance. Um, are there any on the line that I missed who would like to introduce themselves? Yes, this is Dave Brady from Bedford Park Southwest Council. I'm in my fifth term. Thank you, President Brady. It sounds like we can hear Mayor Kolosh now. And if I'm pronouncing that not right or not, please correct me. It, you can hear me now? Yes. You, okay, thank you. Um, I'm Bob Kolosh, I'm the mayor of Thornton. I'm starting my third term. I probably met a few of you at the mayor's caucus luncheons when we were having them, at part of Southborough Mayors and Managers. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor Shoki, that was everyone who I saw in attendance. Yeah, I think we have some other people on the line here, and I'd like to get everybody identified so we all can know who everybody is. I know, Mayor Burns, you want to introduce yourself? I do. Thank you very much, Mayor Shoki. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kevin Burns. I'm the mayor of Geneva, Illinois, and I just began my sixth term. And I'm also joined by my colleague, the sustainability specialist with the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus, Cheryl Scott. Okay. Very good. Anybody else on the call that hasn't been identified? All right. Well, I thank everybody for coming. I've got a little script here that I'm supposed to read, so just bear with me for a moment here. Uh, as permitted by the governor's disaster declaration of June 25th, 2021, uh, the, 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 the determination has been made that in-person meetings are not practical or prudent for some committees. To ensure that the committee is as transparent as possible, we will like to post the meeting materials approximately one week in advance, provide recordings of this meeting link to our website, and we'll take all votes by roll call. The CMAP staff will read the names of the members that are signed in and then ask any other committee members that they may have who have been missed. So I think we've done that. Uh, moving to item two under agenda, which is the agenda changes and announcements. I'm not aware of any agenda changes. Do we have anybody on the, on the uh, call here have any announcements they'd like to make? No, Mayor Schalke, we're good. Okay, uh, it's also a note here, this meeting will be recorded. Uh, and I think we've confirmed that the recordings have begun. Uh, make sure that you use your full name in the GoToMeeting. You can then edit your name by going to the top corner of the screen and click on the Go to the Meeting. Please use the mute function through the GoToMeeting if you have to be on the phone. This will help eliminate excessive background noise those on the phone can also press star six to mute and unmute themselves. You are welcome to turn on your camera for now. Once we begin the presentations, please turn your camera off unless you are presenting. If you have any questions during the meeting, please use the chat box, which the staff will be constantly monitoring. When making a motion, please include your name so the staff can properly record it. And we have already identified and I want to officially welcome the new members that have joined us. Uh, this is a very worthwhile group because I, as I jokingly tell people, it's not a joke, but it's the truth. Uh, as a mayor in the region, you can join a lot of things, but this is the place where the money is. So uh, this is a very important place to be and it's very important that each regional council be present so that uh, they can be ensured that uh, everybody's uh, getting their fair share of what's going on in the region. And we've tried over the years very, very hard to make sure there's equity in the distribution of funds. And I think there's been a long held belief that uh, through the way we do things that that is uh, the uh, case. 
Okay, it says, I will now entertain a motion to approve both the minutes for the January 19th, 2021 and the April 20th, 20, 2021 meetings. Please remember to unmute yourself and state your name prior to making a motion. And I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Karen Darge, second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Uh, I guess then we, uh, are there any questions from the chat box? I guess none. Uh, I ask now Mary to lead us in the roll call. Okay, President Lungmas. Here. President Hayes. Yes. President Gallagher. Here. President Brady. President Einhorn? Yes. President Kolosh? Yes. Mayor Grasso? Here. President Ryback? Aye. Mayor Brent? Yes. And Mayor Kearns? I'll vote yes, Karen Church. <laughs> Oh. Thank you, President Darch. And then Mayor Schelke. Yes, and uh, I didn't hear any no's, so I must, I'll must i proclaim the minutes as for the two meetings to be approved as presented. Uh, moving then to item four in our agenda, which is the CMAP update. And Aaron Allman, our very qualified executive director, is with us today. And welcome, Aaron, and thank you for sharing your what you're about to share. Thanks so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet all of the new members on the committee. We're happy to have you here. I think one of the things that's unique about the way our region works is how we program our transportation funds and the important role that this committee plays in helping us think through projects that make an impact across our region here. So um, I've been coming to our virtual meetings and I hope to come to your in-person meetings when we start having them in the fall here to give an update of some of the other activities that have gone on since your last meeting. So um, a, a couple things at our last um, CMAP board meeting, we typically take July and August off. We had an overview of the, the rail infrastructure system here in Northeastern Illinois, just to provide some context to our newer board members that we have as the ongoing discussions of the um, CN acquisition of the Kansas City Southern Line continues to, to be in the news across our region here. Um, and so, Again, we anticipate that uh, perhaps there could be a voting trust decision in mid-July, but we're keeping a close eye on that. We know that freight is a, an important part to our economy, but also that it has impacts on our local communities as well. And so balancing those two things are, are in our region's best interest here. So. Um, I also uh, saw Mayor Burns on the line. I just want to congratulate you on a very successful event. I know you're talking about the work that we've been doing collaboratively between the Mayor's Caucus um, to address uh, to climate action planning in our region. And I think the role of you all as mayors is so important um, because it really is going to take our collective efforts working together um, to address and mitigate the, the impacts of, of, of climate here in our region. And we want to be prepared and resilient. So. Mayor, I know you'll be speaking in a minute, but uh, I worked with uh, in a few agenda items here, but wanted to recognize that the event was really great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, uh, also happening over the past uh, few weeks here, I presented at the Tollways System Review Committee about the Tollways role and, and the role of green infrastructure as it relates to transportation. Again, this nexus between our transportation systems and our natural environments is, is so intertwined and there's some proactive things that we can be doing together to be able to make sure that our our multi-million dollar, our billion dollar transportation investments really do continue to think about our quality of life and the environment here across the region. Um, I thought, uh, I know Alice Gallagher, Mayor Gallagher, you're on that committee, but um, I, we, I thought we had a, a good discussion afterwards about some of the impacts. Yes, thank you, Aaron. Thanks for the presentation. Excuse me, presentation. I think it was very well received, so appreciate it. Great, um, happy to do so. Um, I also wanted to share too uh, that on last Friday I was able to meet with USDOT Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Uh, we met at the CSX Intermodal Yard in Bedford Park, where um, 
a number of uh, very important elected officials from federal level and from the local level were there as well as railroads. Uh, County Chair uh, Preckwinkle was there as well. Um, you know, my, uh, I had the opportunity to talk with Secretary Buttigieg about the work that we're doing here in the region to uh, reduce greenhouse gases through our investment in transit and freight activities across our region through our congestion mitigation air quality program. Um, and then also really just talked about the fact that infrastructure is our competitive advantage here. And if we want to continue to be successful, we really need to connect people to the good jobs that are here and the good jobs that are in the infrastructure field as well. So um, it was a unique opportunity, really honored to be there, was invited by Congresswoman Newman, but um, you know, we impressed upon him the importance of this region and making sure that we are well connected, that we're thinking about being more resilient and, and investing the federal dollars that we receive wisely. Um, just a, a couple of other quick notes here is that we are scheduled to have us our first state of the region event, um, October 7th. You should be receiving some invitations to those as well. Um, and then this should be our last fully virtual meeting here of the Council of Mayors Executive Committee. We hope as we go into the fall, although we will continue to monitor and, and watch what happens across the region, um, we will be getting back into in-person meetings in September. So. Um, Based on your next meeting of October, we anticipate that that will probably be in person here. So we'll we'll continue to, to reach out and give you information. It'll be in our new offices. And so again, we'll coordinate the opportunity, I think, to, to view the historic space and the rooftop here at the old post office. And then the, the last note that I had here is that I know many of you had worked closely with Sherry Kane. She retired um, at the end of last month. Um, we have a new executive operations manager here at CMAP. Her name is Blanca Vela Schneider. And she, you may hear from her from time to time as she helps us coordinate our, our committees and, and whatnot. So wanted to let you know that, that we've got some new faces. With that, that concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions that folks may have. Any questions of Erin? Well, thank you for a very complete and comprehensive report. Uh, it's great to see CMAP is in the trenches and working well. So uh, appreciate the good efforts. And I, I certainly look forward to coming into the meeting and seeing the new headquarters. As, as a small child, I can remember driving underneath that, that post office building and always wondering what it was like with people up above you. But so I guess I finally get to see that now. So uh, good things ahead. Uh, Moving then to item five, which is the STP Project Selection Committee update, and Doug Ferguson's here with us to do this. Doug? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, filling in for CAMA today on this. Uh, the Project Selection Committee met on July 1st, and in addition to discussing the shared fund program that I'll be discussing in a few minutes, uh, they also received updates on the status of the current shared fund projects, uh, and a summary of the programming and obligations of the STP funds throughout the region. Uh, so with that, I know it was a really short report. Um, I can take any questions on the, the committee meeting, or I can move on to the uh, uh, shared fund program along with CMAC and locally programmed TAP funds. Any questions of Doug? I guess not. Doug, then we'll roll to item six on the agenda, which is the recommended CMAP, TAP, L, and STP shared fund programs released for public comment. You want to handle that one? Yep. Uh, as detailed in the memo in your packet, a uh, joint call for the STP shared fund, CMAC, and locally programmed TAP projects was held from January to March of this year. Uh, there were 135 applications for funding um, that were received across all three funding programs. Uh, staff evaluated the applications accordingly, accordingly to the methodologies approved by the STP and CMAC project selection committees to determine eligibility and the final scoring for each program. Uh, these evaluations led to the development of three recommended programs which were presented to the respective project selection committees and released for a public comment period on July 1st. Uh, the public comment period is currently ongoing and will close on Friday, July 30th. Um, the three programs combined uh, include over $280 million in federal funding for more than 50 projects, including uh, bike pad, uh, bridges, emissions reductions, uh, highway and transit projects um, that are sponsored by the City of Chicago, suburban municipalities, uh, the counties, IDOT, the RTA, and the service boards. 
a little less than half of the funds programmed, 120 of the 281 million are for projects that are located within our region's highest need cohort for communities. And over 25 million in toll credits are being utilized to reduce the local match commitments for eight projects in these communities. Um, more detailed statistics about each recommended program are contained in the memo. And the memo contains links to even more details. Um, but I do want to call out a couple of highlights uh, this morning. Uh, the CMEC program, which is focused on emissions reductions, uh, includes 213 million for 31 projects. And while there are more highway projects funded than any other project card, the largest investment, about 190 million, is for transit projects throughout the region. Uh, combined, the projects are estimated to eliminate 113 kilograms of volatile organic compound emissions per day. Uh, the TAP program, uh, which is focused on implementing the region's regional greenways and trails plan, includes 22.4 million for 12 bicycle facility projects. The SDP Shared Fund program adds 46 million for nine new projects that will reconnect, or sorry, reconstruct uh, four roadway segments, improve one major bridge, modernize and improve safety in two corridors, and eliminate two uh, bicycle and pedestrian barriers. Uh, these projects were, uh, uh, sorry, these projects collectively serve over 7.9 million jobs and households, and more than half are located on facilities where more than 20% of the users are, min are minorities living below the poverty line. Um, as I noted earlier, the public comment period is currently open through July 30th. Uh, comments can be submitted by sending an email to transportation at cmap.illinois.gov. Staff encourages all the members of this committee to review and discuss the proposed programs uh, with your communities and staff and your constituents and to spread the word about the public comment period. Um, after the comment period closes, the comments will go back to the SDP and CMAC project selecting committees for final discussion and program approval. Uh, CMAP staff will then uh, process TIP amendments to incorporate the committee's approved programs and those TIP amendments will be brought to the Transportation Committee on September 24th for consideration for a recommendation of approval to the CMAP Board and MPO Policy Committee in October. Uh, if there are any questions or comments this morning, I would be happy to answer them. Yeah, what Doug just said is a pretty comprehensive list of projects here. And certainly if any of the new members or any anybody is on the council now has any particular questions or comments, I'd encourage you to make them or ask the question because uh, that's what we're here all about is to communicate and so that the region understands what we're trying to do and the good ways that we're trying to do it. And uh, this process has been, as I told you, I've been here a long time and this process has been refined and redone and reviewed and rebuilt uh, several times. And we really, I think, got it to a very good place right now so that there is you know, sharing and cautious overview and knowing what's going on. And it's all very much out front of the committee. So everybody knows that uh, everything is being done totally above board. So any other questions of Doug? I just have a quick question. Is the, uh, is the link on the agenda, the call for projects, is that where all the information is at? That's correct. Uh, the call for projects webpage contains uh, both the recommended program, but all the materials that have been um, uh, produced throughout the, the call so far. Thanks, Doug. Yep. So any other, any other questions of Doug? All right, uh, moving then to uh, item seven, which is the IDOT Bureau of Local Roads update. And that's always given to us by Chad Riddle from IDOT. Uh, Chad, can you give the committee an update on the IDOT's Bureau of Local Roads? Mayor Shelke, this is Terry. Chad was unable to join us Chad, at the last. Chad made it last minute. I'm sorry, Terry. Okay. All right. I, I thought did, I saw it. I, name I, was I, Chad. Yeah, I, I, I did join late. I did have another call that was supposed to go till about 10 or 10.30, and luckily a rarity that it got done early. So uh, I made it. Um, basically say we don't really have a lot of updates. Uh, IDOT is uh, still working remote for the most part. I mean, local road staff is in the office one day a week, working uh, remote the other four days a week. Um, and a lot of the other bureaus are doing the same. So the office is not 
filled up. Uh, we don't ever return to office state when we'll either do a hybrid and make it more than one day a week or go to five days a week. So that is still in the works and probably, I think depends on what CMS decides down in Springfield. It's not necessarily a district call. Um, letting wise, uh, we've had some letting since last time. June, we had eight projects. July, we only had three. Some right away issues uh, dropped a lot of those off. And the same thing's happening with September. Right now we're shooting for seven projects in September and 13 in November. And again, a lot of our projects now are have right away and that's the critical path to see if they maintain their letting schedule and we're working diligently with the locals and their consultants to make sure that at least the plans are ready and that when they do come uh, clear for right away, they will be ready to go to letting. Um, other than that, business as usual, I will take any questions, comments, complaints that uh, anybody would like to put upon us. Anybody have any questions for Chad? Well, I would just like to say as the chairman here that uh, we have enjoyed uh, specifically with Chad's in intervention here, or leadership here, a uh, really good relationship with IDOT the last few years. And so uh, I, I would encourage anybody, something comes up in your community next week, whatever, uh, you know, you can either call IDOT and ask for Chad or you can call the CMAP staff and we can give you his, his uh, contact information. And as a result of that, uh, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to get back to you with whatever he can offer for information. And this does come up with in somewhat of a regular occasion. There's something happens between the community of the city, the village, and IDOT, and there needs to be some further understanding or discussion. So Chad's the kind of go-to guy and helps uh, helps us get things done that need to be done. So I just wanted, for the new members specifically, emphasize to you that this is a very working system and one that does work very well. And I've certainly used it in my town several times and it certainly has always been to my satisfaction that what happened was a very good outcome. So again, please feel free to call upon Chad if uh, you've got any particular issues or questions. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And again, like I emphasized, I'd like to nip any issues in the bud before, uh, cause I do know that some uh, local officials do you know communicate with their senators and representatives and even go talk to the secretary that you know rather than if we can get it resolved without going up the ladder it makes life a lot easier for all of us and uh makes things move a lot smoother and a lot quicker so thank you for the uh kind words mayor and uh that's what our job is thank you for the nice job you and the rest of the idot staff do on our behalf Thanks. Okay, moving then to item eight, which is the transit performance based capital allocation process. And Jill Leary is here to talk to us about this. Good morning, Mayor Schelke. Uh, I'm, my name is Jill Leary. I'm the Deputy Executive Director for Capital Programming and Planning and the Chief of Staff at RTA. And I'm here today to talk about the results of work that RTA staff has been doing with the service boards this spring to develop a new performance based capital allocation structure. Following a public comment period, this was approved by the RTA board at their meeting last Thursday. So I'll, I'll kind of run you through the, the results of this. Next slide, please. The RTA capital program process is governed by the RTA Act and includes the capital programs for CTA, Metra, and PACE. RTA and the service boards work collaboratively each year to set funding amounts based on estimates of funding from a variety of sources. Next slide. RTA has also taken a strong role in capital advocacy. In addition to fulfilling our role as, as specified in the RTA Act, Act, we also work to make the case for sustainable ongoing capital funds. This chart shows that about a third of our assets are not in a state of good repair and need to be replaced. The influx of funding from Rebuild Illinois will help us improve assets in the short term However, in the longer term, if state bond investments are not continued, conditions begin to de deteriorate again and we will eventually be worse than we are today. This is really what we're trying to avoid. And instead, we wanna make a case for more stable capital funds to maintain and enhance the system. Next slide. The 2021 to 25 capital program includes a mix of federal, state, RTA, and local sources totaling more than $6.3 billion 
for the five-year period. You can see from this chart the sources and levels of funding for the capital program. This funding is helpful, but still far less than the two to three billion dollars each year we need to bring our assets into a state of good repair. Next slide. Two years ago, when Rebuild Illinois was passed and both bond funds and PAYGO dollars became available, the RTA board established some new principles to allocate funds starting with the 2020 to 2024 program. These principles were intended to help the agencies move away from historical formulas to new ways of allocating the funding that was focused on addressing the state of good repair backlog. Accordingly, state funding in these years was allocated to the agencies based on their backlog of capital needs. The RTA board also commissioned a staff working group in conjunction with the service boards to develop new allocations for 2025. Next slide. In 2020, the RTA and the service boards, and the, when I refer to the service boards, that's CTA, Metro, and PACE, worked together to improve transparency and capital programming and strengthen the linkages between capital projects and regional goals. There are, se there are several regional processes already in place to take projects from conception to completion. We do not want to replace these or create unnecessary bureaucracy, but instead we want to do a better job of connecting the the dots between these activities. Starting at the bottom of this pyramid, the work looked at the regional planning processes like ONDO 2050 and Invest in Transit because those give us the long-term view of projects in the pipeline. The RTA Budget and Capital Program because this helps us see who needs to be funded and what needs to be funded soon. And RTA's Capital Program Administration and Project Management Oversight because this helps us monitor projects actively underway. This work was a necessary step uh, forward in transparency, but did not provide a new allocation formula that satisfied the RTA board. So the 2025 funds were set aside for us to develop a new allocation method this year. Next slide. This timeline led us to follow up on the allocation work this year. We are now focusing on 2025 and 2026 capital funds. I will discuss which specific funds in a moment here. This proposal is part of a larger effort that we will kick off this summer to update the Regional Transit Strategic Plan as we work toward recovery efforts coming out of the pandemic. We had a shorter time frame to turn this proposal around, so we met with the service board staff over a series of meetings to develop a collaborative and coordinated approach. Next slide. The funding pots we will be discussing for the allocation are PAYGO, and that's the term we refer to transit share of the state motor fuel tax funding, and the three sources of federal formula funds shown here on this slide. We are not including any other sources of capital funds, such as service board funds from other sources. Also, as a reminder, this is capital funds that we're discussing, not operating nor federal relief dollars. Next slide. Building on the principles established by the RTA board for Rebuild Illinois and our strategic plan, Invest in Transit, we've outlined three principles for basing the capital allocation. First, capital need. We are defining need in terms, again, of, state, of the state of good repair, given our past work to establish state of good repair as the fundamental issue for capital funding. The RTA and the service boards have been working on developing and refining the region's asset inventory for the last 10 years, and we have produced a number of reports that demonstrate the level of activity that has gone into developing this need-based approach. It was the basis of our current regional strategic plan, Invest in Transit, and was successful in securing funds for transit through the state, state's Rebuild Illinois, uh, Rebuild Illinois program. Ultimately focusing on state of good repairs, our fundamental approach to maintaining and enhancing the region's transit system. Second, capital expenditure performance. The RTA board has made it clear that the new capital funding needs to, needs to be expended efficiently, and we are using two measures, average age of funds and percent of funds spent in a year as our uh, capital expenditure performance measures. And third, policy priorities. We are using Invest in Transit strategic goals, the established mechanism to identify priority projects and the core requirements to ensure funding goes, goes toward the best project, projects and each service board will pro 
program 20% of the funds for equity and or accessibility projects. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna get into the details of the definitions today, but I'm happy to share more information with anyone who's interested in the details of the allocation process. Next, next slide. We presented this process to the RTA board at their June meeting and then released the document for public comment for July 1st. RTA Communications promoted the opportunity via stakeholder email, blog posts, and social media posts. And three letters were received, and I will briefly summarize those today. Next slide. Several organizations listed here on the slide submitted a co-sign letter requesting the RTA board to delay adoption of the proposed allocation structure until RTA makes improvements to prioritize innovation over spending, creates a process to fund regionally significant projects across service boards, and updates the state of good repair data and clearly defines equity and accessibility projects with performance-based goals. A second letter was received by Cook County President Tony, uh, Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. This letter requests that RTA make specific provisions to achieve more seamless transfers through a universal fare with discounted transfers between agencies, increase the amount of set-asides to directly select projects that advance regional priorities, and set higher targets than 20% of capital funds directed towards projects that promote equity and accessibility. The letter also adds that, propose, that the pros, the proposal would benefit by a longer and more inclusive public process to engage stakeholders. And a third letter was received from the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus uh, following the public comment period on June 12th. This letter requested the board, the RTA board delay adoption to further engage stakeholders and echoed many of the points in the letter from the Consortium of Civic Organizations. The three letters are included uh, in the RTA board, me board meeting materials found on the RTA website. The RTA staff and the board appreciate the input engagement of stakeholders in this process and recommend that topics in the three letters be part of the next regional transit strategic plan uh, that will be conducted as part of step three of our recovery. Meanwhile, the board proceeded with the process as outlined as, does, as delaying the allocation process further would require setting aside 25, 2025 and 2026 funds for another year and could threaten service board capital construction processes and timelines. Adoption of the process now provides a foundation from which to address these concerns as the engagement process continues with RTA's work on the next strategic plan. Next slide. Uh, to wrap this up and to conclude, here's the summary of the proposed allocation structure. Uh, we, we definitely want to acknowledge what we put together and developed here is not perfect, but it helps us all take a step or two forward in a credible manner based on a lot of previous work, data analysis, and performance metrics. Next slide. And as I had mentioned a couple of times, moving forward in 2021, one of RTA's next activities is to begin the conversation on updating our strategic plan. In August, we will engage the RTA board in a strategic conversation about our approach. And in the fall, we look, we look forward to widening the conversation by engaging stakeholders, including yourselves, as we develop a strategic vision for the region's uh, transit system with an eye, eye toward immediate recovery, revitalization, and ultimately reinvention over the coming, of year, over the coming years. So thank you uh, for your attention to this, and I'm happy to try to answer any questions. Do we have any questions of Jill this morning? I have one. Please, go ahead, Mike. Um, two terms that were used quite uh, generously in this presentation were exceeding useful life and state of good repair. Can you tell me uh, the difference between these two? And are we talking primarily rolling stock or are we talking uh, infrastructure? Yes, yeah, so thanks for that question. So we're talking about all uh, all of the assets and by assets i mean rolling stock track um, stations kind of anything that's affiliated with the transit system and so essentially there's a timeline or time frame and it goes through maintenance um, cycles and so essentially the useful life is how long that that asset lasts and so we kind of have a running total of all of that and so that's what we're calculating against 
but I mean, like for rolling stock for like Metro, for instance, uh, they have a pretty robust, last time I knew anyway, a pretty robust uh, rehabilitation program for the rolling stock. Is that, is that then um, transfer over into a better state of good repair uh, category? Right, that? so essentially, I'm sorry to cut you off. Essentially, it's trying to keep up with all of that. It's it's tying the funding and the cost to maintain all those vehicles, to rehabilitate them. And then essentially, once they get uh, what we just call at the end of their useful life, once they, they're past their maintenance structures, buying new vehicles. So that's kind of the the universe of, of, of those activities included in kind of the state of good repair calculations. And so we're tying the funding to, to all of those. Did the RTA spend any time thinking about what the landscape is gonna look like in the next five years based upon the huge paradigm shift that just took place with this uh, with COVID? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, that's my many references to updating this next strategic plan. We have a five-year strategic plan that is set to sunset in uh, 2023. We obviously think with the drastic changes to the to the environment and transit um, over the last year as a result of COVID that we wanted to start that strategic plan discussion now. So essentially what we're, we're doing is making these capital allocation decisions. Um, as, I, as I said, we, we have about a $20 billion backlog, which means we need $20 billion essentially to maintain the system right now. So we're trying to address that, but we, but we also think it's very important to start the conversation about what the current and future condition and you know uh, what stakeholders want for the transit system moving forward. So we're looking to kick that off with our board in August and probably come back to to many stakeholder groups, including council of mayors and others, um, in this fall to have those discussions as well. Because I mean, I can see that uh, we don't honestly know what kind of recovery will take place. You know, when you think about Metro, this is an example. Their, their loading, their loading is like um, 20 percent right now, and you would certainly have expected it to be uh, more at this stage of the game. Um, I don't know that it's ever going to get back to where it was before, which would change your capital needs, correct? Right. Uh, there are many factors that are, and a lot that we'll, we'll need to go into some of these discussions. Um, and I think really what we're trying to focus on now is maintaining the system and as as ridership um, regains to make sure that that's there for riders. But I think we also need to, as you as you aptly mentioned, have a conversation about what what the future of transit is. And we're, we're looking to start that off very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions of Jill? I just want to add uh, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Rockingham and myself and Aaron have had some conversations about this whole movement. We've been contacted. Uh, I think we are, Aaron, are we still going to send our letter that we've put together to kind of endorse the idea here? To get, I think the RTA is listening to us, so I don't know if we need to send the letter, but I, I just wanted to let the, the Council of Mayors know here that we have been involved in the conversations, and I think it's the most worthwhile conversation to have, and I really want to commend the RTA for their adaptability and their willingness to step back and take a further look at how they're doing things and how we can do things a little bit better, and as Mayor Einhorn just brought up, uh, the pandemic certainly has kind of kind of reshape the focus of the region as to how it's going to go in the immediate years ahead. And uh, so I think we're, we've got a lot on the table here to talk about, and I'm very, I feel good about the fact that we have people on the, at the table who understand it, know it, and are now, you know, trying to kind of recalculate and refigure where as a region we're going. So I, I like to think we're still in the game and working towards some very productive progress for the region to have in the trans transportation arena in the days ahead. So anybody else got anything else they want to add to that? Mayor Schelke, uh, yes. Mayor Darch here. Um, just want to just, I know you'll, you'll do this carefully, but as uh, a community and in our Northwest 
council, many are on the Metro line and it's critical to our communities um, and absolutely have seen, you know, a complete drop in ridership, which is now coming down. So I just think the timing of the, I know it's a 2023 plan, so we have time to watch this recovery, but um, I don't want to quickly, the nails going in the coffin of, of metro ridership um, from from suburbia. I mean, our, I guess our hope out here is that it comes back in a big way, and so I would hate planning to be done with the assumption that it's that's not going to happen. So giving us a long enough time to look at it, you know, as I don't think by fall you'll have a complete picture either. But obviously, if it's an ongoing look, um, which RTA I'm sure will do, that's really important too. Um, those of us on those lines, and I'm sure in the other in CTA and, and PACE as well. Well, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, I, I think that, that that's all part of the strategy that we're trying to reach here. And uh, the fact that we all can sit here and have these conversations as the work begins or as work is in progress, I think is very strategic to what we're going to end up doing here. So uh, I appreciate the, the conversation, and certainly we I want to keep this one as kind of an open subject that as we meet the next time and thereafter that this will be uh, a highlight of the meeting will be to you know kind of see where we're at and where we're going and and then allow any member of the council here to throw up or representing your councils uh, uh, any types of ideas or thoughts or considerations or concerns you may have as to how the RTA is, is moving forward but uh, again I've been around a long time I've seen a lot of different RTA boards and directors and again, I get, I feel like right now we've got an RTA leadership that's at the top of the game and is certainly insightful enough to understand what the region is facing and how we should go about trying to meet those those issues as we go forward. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased by the conversation and by, by all the direction that already has been taken. Not to say there isn't much more yet to be done, but I think the region is on the right track, no pun intended. Thank you. Uh, anybody else got any comments? All right, we will move then to the reason we, we have, we're honored to have uh, Mayor Burns on the call with us is uh, he is going to give us the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus Climate Action Plan. Mayor Burns. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna begin with about a four minute narrative and then we're going to show you a, a brief video presentation that I think helps summarize the plan perhaps uh, more effectively, indeed more effectively than I could. So again, good morning to you all and a warm welcome to my colleague and friend, Cheryl Scott, the sustainability specialist from the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. As some of you may know, the MMC launched its regional climate plan last Tuesday. We had nearly 895 registrants and more than 600 participants on the call. We started our work on the climate plan in August of 2019. At that time, we were grateful that the European Union chose to mentor us along with three other US metropolitan areas. The EU wanted to demonstrate the power of regional climate planning in America after fostering similar regional collaborations around the globe. We also received assistance from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, who co-wrote the plan with us. Our friends at CMAP contributed to the plan with technical expertise and of course, valuable data. The Climate Action Plan was crafted with extraordinary stakeholder participation during the past two years. In fact, 175 organizations and 270 stakeholders contributed to the plan whether by attending in-person workshops or virtual workshops. Of those stakeholders, 53 were municipalities who shared their expertise, and we examined stakeholder feedback when, of course, writing the plan. We also studied 52 separate sustainability and climate action plans from around the world and incorporated the best practices of those plans into our recommendations. This plan is important for many reasons, of course. Because it is the first regional plan for the Chicago area and only the third in the United States is worth noting. The plan calls for all municipal leaders to come to 
and participate in the action necessary and asks them to do whatever they can to address the climate crisis in their own communities. Knowing that different communities have varying levels of capacity and constraints, we've built the plan accordingly. Local governments do not need to create their own climate action plan to be effective. They can align their actions with the goals in the plan we have created for them. Time and money are better spent doing something else. The plan is also important because it shows constituents that our region is doing something to address the climate crisis. We are national leaders pioneering the regional collaborative approach to climate planning. The plan presents strategies for municipal action and climate mitigation, reducing greenhouse gases, and adaptation, protecting people and assets from climate events, such as flooding. Some of the easy and familiar strategies align with the Greenest Region Compact, which I'm certain most of you are aware of. For example, building codes and promoting active transportation that we just learned about. Municipalities can begin taking these actions now, or they may identify the actions they've already taken and share with us as we advance this plan forward. The plan calls for regional collaboration to address the more challenging strategies, cleaner power grid, electric electrification of buildings and cars, regional resilience from flooding and heat islands, and so on. I personally, and we who helped build the plan, invite all municipal leaders to join us in realizing these goals and objectives. And to understand the plan, perhaps in a more granular way, I have a brief video to share with you. And that video is presented by our friends and highlights two people that I think most of you know, Edith Macra, who is our Director of Environmental Initiatives for the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus, and Dr. Ned Gardner, who works for NOAA. He is dedicated to help in our region on this plan, and interestingly enough, he's the co-architect of the U.S. Climate Resilience Toolkit, and currently serves as NOAA's Engagement Manager. With that, I kindly ask Jared to please cue the video and invite all of you to enjoy it. Thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Ned and I will go through an overview of the plan and orient you to help you use the plan effectively. Greenhouse gas emissions have been building up in our atmosphere since the start of the Industrial Revolution. They can persist for decades or even hundreds of years. So while we begin immediately to halt and draw down greenhouse gas emissions through mitigation, we need to adapt to living with the impacts of climate disruption for a long time. Our plan empowers local leaders to manage the avoidable and avoid the unmanageable. Climate action must be rooted in equity with the well being of people at its center. This plan is based on an understanding of the challenges we face as a region, like sources of greenhouse gas emissions shown in this pie chart or climate related hazards Ned will talk about. These same challenges affect the whole region, although not necessarily in the same way. The strategies for addressing these regional challenges are tailored to leverage the strengths of municipalities. Municipalities can lead by example, encourage others to take actions, and enact policies that address climate change. The plan proposes local solutions to this global problem. Leveraging this economy of scale, can, uh, can, this plan can help municipalities skip ahead to choose meaningful actions appropriate for the community with confidence that they will have regional impact. Our region reduced emissions by 7% between 2010 and 2015. We need to triple or even quadruple this rate of change in order to reach our targets. We need to kick into high gear now. Starting from our most recent greenhouse gas inventory in 2015, we used modeling to calculate emissions reductions for target years 2030, 2040, and 2050. These colored wedges show that emissions must be abated in every sector of our economy, especially in energy generation, energy used in buildings, and in transportation. With known technologies and available data, we know it is possible to reduce emissions 80% by the year 2050. However, the path to net zero 
requires innovation and new capacity. Net zero, which means we add no new emissions to the atmosphere, is our goal. Our targets show a path to cutting emissions in half by the year 2030 on our way to reducing emissions 80% by 2050. This is all from our base year of 2005. Our plan includes eight mitigation strategies, excuse me, objectives to reach these targets. Demonstrate leadership to reduce emissions. Decarbonize energy sources. Optimize building energy. Implement clean energy policies. Decarbonize transportation by eliminating internal combustion engines. Reduce vehicle miles traveled. Manage water and waste sustainably. Sustain ecosystems to sequester carbon. To demonstrate how this plan works, I'll focus on the objective, reduce vehicle miles traveled. In plain speak, that means driving less, using transit more and active transportation more. Let's take a look at a sample of the strategies from our plan. Municipalities can enact zoning codes and make transit more accessible to more people and businesses. They can lead by creating safe paths and infrastructure for walking and biking, and they can encourage others to do so as well. Municipalities can encourage walking, biking, and transit use through education, incentives, and collaboration. The plan also rates each strategy for relative cost and effort, and we describe how each strategy can lead to equitable outcomes for vulnerable residents as well as how that strategy relates to a more resilient future. When we mitigate emissions, new technologies and nature-based solutions also contribute to thriving, resilient communities. Mitigation ad and adaptation actions are interrelated and interdependent. To mitigate emissions, we're tracing greenhouse gases from their source all the way to solution. And that's, so that's one variable, building resilience and adaptation we have to understand hazards and the way the climate amplifies them. And we have to understand how hazards affect people, places, and things that we value. So those are a lot of variables. Consider one example. We all have to get from home to work. If a flood takes out a road or cuts off access to fuel, critical services will be disrupted. One hazard can affect many assets, people, and economic impacts. Building resilience means improving everyday capacity, for example, by accommodating stormwater and designing transportation systems that can function after heavy rains. The resilience portions of this plan emphasize climate smart policy and building back better, creating equitable opportunity and benefits in the process. Using the steps to resilience, we inventory the plethora of things that we care about and the ways that climate can exacerbate a multitude of hazards. We recommend this assessment process be re repeated town by town, but to help address high priority impacts, the plan does provide adaptation strategies linked to common ways that flooding, excessive heat and drought can impact quality of life in the region. The goal of this plan is for each community to persistently equitably increase resilience to emerging climate related hazards. That's an iterative long term process planning for climate change and making the necessary changes to prepare people and protect homes transportation systems and utilities requires coordination, as all the speakers today have emphasized at all levels of our society. The adaptation targets in the plan are climate resilience governance by 2030 using the the decisions and strategies emphasized in the plan. Our target for 2040 is to build resilience across jurisdictions, leveraging federal and state support. By 2050, the Chicago region could be home to cohesive and resilient communities. Hundreds of regional experts categorize the strategies in this plan, yielding five overarching objectives that are widely accepted in adaptation science and practice engage and educate, incorporate equity and inclusion, collaborate and build capacity, enact plans and policies, and adapt operations and investments. For each objective, 
we highlight municipal strategies linked to the criteria that Edith already described, including roles, lead, encourage, and act, costs, and the anticipated effort required to enact each strategy. Our research and engagements in preparing for this plan focused attention on issues of concern across the region that each municipality can address its own climate-related risk using the steps to resilience. The heart of this framework is engagement and iteration denoted by the gears in the center of this schematic representing all the steps. Engaging people at all stages is essential for incorporating equity into building municipal level capacity toward our goal of persistent equitable adaptation. That challenge of sustained inclusive engagement extends to every level of government. Planning organizations and councils of government can support municipal decisions. We can move to the next slide. State governments can support those regional entities and the federal apparatus can support state government. When all these levels are aligned, sustained adaptation can be achieved. Climate is a crisis today because it's been so long in coming and people have been so slow to respond. The emissions of today will be magnified as huge problems tomorrow. As Edith has said, we have to kick into high gear now. The purpose of this collaborative regional plan is to accelerate climate action at a scale and speed that no one municipality could do alone. The lineup of speakers here today demonstrates the kind of coordination we need to cultivate. The attendees of this rollout event are well positioned to help municipal leaders immediately take actions to reduce emissions and build resilience. That wraps it up, ladies and gentlemen. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm I found the happy presentation to yesterday just great from you know, at least two percent. Sorry about that. That's okay, Jay. Mr. Hey, Chairman, Brian, that, I continue? Uh, no, that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Well, certainly on behalf of the CMAP Council of Mayors, I want to thank you for coming today and for the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus's leadership in helping to present this plan and Certainly, Edith's all her good efforts, which I've been able to work with for the last number of years. I think we've made some real progress here. And as talking to other parts of the country, I know Dave Bennett at the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus has been already asked by others in parts of the United States and other urbanized areas, you know, what is our plan? How did you do it? Can we see a copy of it? So uh, I think we're in kind of a leadership role here, and goodness knows. Uh, this thing has got a lot of moving parts to it, as we're all finding out the Illinois General Assembly's got their hand in it, the U.S. Congress has got their hand into it, we've got uh, all kinds of folks lobbying for different things out of this thing, so this is a uh, high-profile political discussion that at the end of the day has some very significant impacts on the future of our world around us, and so hopefully we're on the right course. I think there's a there has to be staying power built into this decision because a lot of this is not going to be accomplished overnight. Uh, you know, some of this we could be 20 years down the road before we're really where we want to be. Uh, I've been asked a, a couple times at meetings I've been at by my constituents in Batavia, you know, about this, and I say, well, you know, I think we got to do something. You know, the, we we got some bad air out there, but more interestingly. If we uh, gradually start to turn all the automobiles into electric, can you imagine the demand on the electric system at nighttime when everybody goes home at night to plug their car into the wall and recharge their batteries? Uh, there's gonna have to be some major change in focus as to how we do things and some of our existing systems are gonna have to be enhanced and improved and made uh, much more productive than maybe they are already. So this is a, this is a critical decision and I thank you for your leadership in it and for the region's interest in it because uh, we're not burying our head in the sand. We've got our eyes wide open and we're trying to move in the right direction. And so having this discussion today, I think was most worthwhile. So thank you. Thank you very much.
Okay, uh, the next one is the committee vacancies. Uh, and we talked about this at the last meeting that we, we had some, and uh, as most of you know, uh, we lost one of our vice chairs. Uh, we have two of them. And one of them was uh, served very admirably Mayor Williams from Linwood, and he was from the South Suburban area. And uh, as if you look at the officers that we currently have in the in the executive board here for the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus, uh, you know, we, we've kind of tried to plan this thing out so that every part of the region has a face at the table or a voice at the table, I guess is probably the better description. And so uh, as, it, as it works out right now, I'm, I'm from out west, so I'm the I'm from the central part of the region. Mayor Rockingham is from up North Chicago in the northern part of the region, and uh, Mayor Williams was from uh, Linwood down in the south end of the region. Unfortunately, he wasn't reelected, so he's off. And so we've got uh, we got a vacancy for second vice chair, and uh, we also have uh, the decision was made initially when we created the surface transportation program selection committee that the three officers of the mayor's caucus would start as the representatives of that. And so the three of us, uh, Mayor Rockingham, Mayor Williams and myself went on there and, and it's a lot of work because there's a, a number of meetings that you're asked to go to or be part of or be on Zoom or whatever, but it's not, a, not an easy task, but it's a, a very valuable one because it, certainly there's a lot of money on the table with those discussions. And we certainly want to have the Council of Mayors there, so it's imperative that we have a representative there. And so the time has come for the three leaders to start to step off the group. And so I said I would be the first to leave. Uh, and so somebody needs to go on representing me. Now, the way I think we've got this planned is, is that I'm stepping off as a voting member, but I'll probably still attend. And we're trying to keep those who have been ex examined in part of the process from the very beginning that they're there to kind of be the the old people at the room or the ones that have the knowledge about where it was before and what worked and what didn't work. So we're trying, I'm going to step off and we need to select somebody from the Council of Mayors to be the STP Project Selection Committee. And we mentioned this at the last meeting, as you may remember. And then we have the CMAC fraction, uh, Project Selection Committee, which we got a vacancy there. And so uh, we've put it out there, and, and some of you may have heard this and some of you don't, and for that I apologize, but we need to have some nominations and elections done here today. Uh, in the position for second vice chair of the CMAP Council of Mayors, uh, the person who's told me that they would be willing to serve if nobody else wants to step forward is Mayor Einhorn from Crete. And uh, I would uh, request a a motion to name him that, and if anybody has any other nominations, we would certainly entertain them and then have a vote. Uh, somebody might want to take some action. I'd make the motion. Mayor Rockingham, uh, second. Okay, it's been moved by Mayor, I think it was Mayor, Mayor Darch, seconded by Mayor Rockingham to uh, nominate uh, Mike Einhorn as the uh, new uh, second vice chairman. Any further nominations? Do I have to, we have to call roll on all three of these or can we do them all at once? What you? I don't think we can do them all at once, Mayor Schilke. Okay. Okay, then the second one is the STP Project Selection Committee. And we've asked for volunteers for that. And the one that has indicated that they would be willing to serve is Mayor Gallagher from Western Springs. And I really thank her for this because this will take a little bit of work on her part, but uh, she's certainly, She's got the experience and knows what this is all about. So I think she'd be a wealthy and worthy addition to that group. So I'd entertain a motion for her nomination and if anybody else has any other nominations they'd like to make, uh, we'd entertain them too. Do we have any other nominations? Mayor, I would, this yeah. is Terry. Um, Mayor Grasso? Yeah, that's the next one. Okay, I just wanna make sure. I got that, I got that. Okay, thank this you. This is for the STP Project Selection Committee, and the next one is the CMAP Project Selection Committee. All right. Okay. So would somebody make a motion then for Mayor Gall or Gallagher's uh, selection as the STP Project Selection Committee? I'll move. Terry, 
Sorry. Moved and seconded. Worked by Ryback. <laughs> All right. And then the last one is the CMAP Project Selection Committee. And uh, uh, that one is, again, another one that uh, is uh, a valuable one. And uh, Mayor Grasso, who has just come back, who was formerly a member of this group, uh, has indicated he would be willing to assume that position. And again, there's a little work involved in that one beyond th these meetings. So uh, I would so ask that he, uh, we nominate him. And is there any other nominations for that? Anybody else have an interest? This is Mayor Rockingham. I'll make that nomination. OK. We have a second. Ellis Gallagher, second. Alice Gallagher seconds. All right, now I guess we can have a roll call on all three of the nominations we've just put on the table. Will the clerk call the roll. Okay, President Lungmas. Yes. Karen, uh, President Darch. Yes. President Hayes. Yes. President Gallagher. Yes. President Brady. Okay, President yeah. Einhorn. Oh, thank you. Yes. President Einhorn. Okay. President Kolosh. Yes. Mayor Grasso. Yes. Mayor Schelke. Yes. President Ryback. Yes. Um, uh, Mayor Brent. Yes. And Mayor Kearns. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, we, uh, your, have you thank you for your support in that. Does uh, any one of the newly electeds want to make any comments about those, about themselves? Or uh, oh, I don't, I didn't hear my name uh, as a vote. I apologize, um, Mayor Rockingham. I've got you on the list now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. You, you made the motion, so. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's what we need to do with that. So I appreciate everybody's willingness to step forward. We've got some good candidates there that I, I'm very pleased to have all those now in the fold here. So uh, moving to 11 is the local government network update. And Patrick Day is with us to hopefully give us a quick update on that. Patrick? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Mayor Schilke. Uh, since last report at the April 20th meeting, the network undertook and completed three formal initiatives. In May, an important laborious behind the scenes initiative was conducted, and that was to ensure we were in tune with all the changes following the April elections. So CMAP staff uh, scanned all results across all communities and uh, performed, performed a comprehensive update to our database. And then with the updated contacts in hand, liaison sought to introduce themselves to all communities uh, with newly elected mayors and village presidents to help ensure that a connection to all of them is sustained through transitions. The second initiative was to support the region-wide effort to promote the hashtag visit Chicagoland tourism campaign. Liaisons introduced the initiative, connected municipalities with their corresponding destination marketing agency where that coverage existed uh, for added support and encouraged efforts to promote the many places uh, we have to visit across the, our municipalities and encourage tourism to them and provide some technical support if uh, wanted. And lastly, in June, the network assisted the agency's promotion of the inaugural Regional Excellence Awards. Um, this wanted to build opportunity, uh, build awareness of this new opportunity and uh, to highlight uh, good work by local governments over the past year and to um, make partners aware of the State of the Region event where awardees will be celebrated on October 7th. Currently, we're finalizing the FY22 calendar of LGN initiatives, uh, slating the most important agency initiatives um, while leaving room for emergent needs, which is a, a key feature of the network. Um, we have some exciting things to roll out and we look forward to doing so soon and uh, building on the successes of FY21. Uh, which the network is about a year old, I think in calendar years, it's uh, gone across three um, fiscal years, which of course is the, the measure of a local government uh, engagement tool. So it's maybe three in those years. Um, so we marked that during this period also. Um, so that conclude, concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions if, they, if you have them. 
Any questions to Patrick? Thank you, Patrick, for your good work and you and your group. Uh, again, it's a, a great idea that we're carrying forth here. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, okay, moving to 12, which is the legislative discussion and update from Gordon Smith. Yes, hi, uh, good morning, Mayor. Uh, my name is Tim McMahon. I'm on our plan implementation and legislative affairs team. I'll be giving uh, the legislative update this morning, and uh, we're going to be focusing on what's going on in Washington, D.C. Um, so the president's uh, bipartisan framework is making its way through the the Senate, as we speak, the, the bill text has not yet been released, but according to the framework, it would provide $974 billion over the next five years. Uh, $579 billion of that is new or additional spending uh, above current spending for transportation infrastructure and other infrastructure like water, energy, uh, broadband infrastructure. Uh, like I said, the final bill text has yet to be released. Uh, but the Senate Majority Leader has indicated um, that he would like a vote on this package as soon as tomorrow. Um, so we will be keeping an eye on that. Uh, and we, alongside our national member organizations, are keeping a close eye uh, to see when that bill text comes out uh, and how it compares to the bill that the House passed earlier this month. Uh, the invest act so um the invest act would provide 715 billion over five years for both traditional infrastructure as well as water and wastewater infrastructure uh, so we're still just seeing what's going to happen between both the house and the senate um, and it's still unclear how both chambers plan to pay for each one of their bills uh, and that appears to be the sticking point on the senate side so far. So either way, Congress has until September 30th to either pass another FAST Act extension or a new reauthorization bill. Um, on a parallel track, the Speaker of the House has indicated she will not move forward on, on a reauthorization bill until the Senate passes its $3.2 trillion uh, budget reconciliation package. So think of this as like a second American Rescue Plan um, except for more human infrastructure. That's the way they've described it. Um, so, so that's what's happening in DC. Uh, and with that, I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. I know Gordon is on the line um, and does not have a, a report, but is happy to take any questions as well on the state side. Any questions for Tim or Gordon? Well, thank both of you for your good work. Uh, that is a, a mishmash of uh, political strategies, political opinions, private and public interests. Everybody's got their hand in the game and their mouth on the on the floor. So uh, we'll see where it all goes. I, I guess I'm not of the opinion that anything's going to happen, anything real quick. It, uh, it's going to take a while. All right, uh, moving then to, uh, do we have any other business from members of the Council of Mayors? Do we have any public comment? There is no public comment on the on the computer. On the, on the computer, we see none. All right. So our uh, next meeting is uh, my notes here. It said that will be Ju July twentieth. Well, that's today. No, it's uh, October nineteenth. October nineteenth. Okay. Uh, if there's no other business, I'll I'll adjourn the meeting and I would just offer the comment that it will likely be asking you to come in person to the new offices downtown, and the date for it is October 19th. So uh, with that, uh, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank everybody for a very productive dis discussion, and I look forward to uh, talking to you and seeing you all maybe in person on the 19th of October. Okay. Meeting stay stands safe. adjourned. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye now. Long, Mayor.